agree with a few of the ladies here, and, um, and I think they'll be able to relate to the fact that I must have been out of my ever lowered mind to be reading with a message at the same time. I haven't ever done my homework. I may need a note, actually. Um, but it's been a lesson the last few weeks in finding peace and trust and giving my anxiousness over to God. And that's what my message is about today, finding peace and, and joy in God. But first I'd like to pray. Dear Lord, thank you for our church. And by our church, I mean the people in it. Thank you for our pastors, Alan and Jackie, Ruth and Daniel. We are so blessed to have them pastor and minister to us each week. Thank you for our leaders and our worship and leadership team and for everyone who helps with communion, cleaning and the rostering, kids' church, with the work that's been done to this amazing building we gather in, and just for everyone that comes along on Sundays. And Lord, I know that there are people here who are far more mature Christians than I am, but for some reason you've put me up here today to serve you. Please help me to do it well, but keep me humble because I know that this message is your message, not mine. They're your words, they're not mine. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I want to live a joyful, peaceful life. No matter what I'm going through, how others are treating me, or what's going on at work or at home, I want that, jo that joy and peace that God said we could have. And I remember the first time I felt real peace. And it totally changed the way I think, and, and it changed my life, really. It was when I realised that when we're living in the future with Jesus in the kingdom, what we're going through now will seem so insignificant. And I'm not saying that our problems now and our feelings now are insignificant. And I don't think, I don't believe that that's what God thinks either. But one day they will feel that way. And that's what I focused on when I felt things getting on top of me. I fixed my mind on that future life with Jesus. Because when you think about it, our lives are so short when we compare them to eternity. I've heard it said they're like a crack in a wall. And we know as believers that we will see that kingdom, that heaven on earth, that eternity one day. Revelations 21 verse 4 says, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. And there shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. So we know that when we're living in the kingdom, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be a really awesome place to live. It's going to be a place of joy and peace. But God said that we could find that peace in his presence while we're living here on earth. He didn't say that we won't go through difficult times or even devastating times. In fact, he said we would go through trials. But he also said that we can feel joy and peace in him, in his presence in those times. Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 to 7. I'm going to read them all and then break them down later. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Keep in mind that it was Paul who made these statements. Paul, who had been beaten and thrown in jail for preaching the gospel. If it was me that said, be anxious for nothing and let your request be made known to God, it really wouldn't mean anything. I mean, I've had my stuff, I've got my stuff, but it comes from someone who knows what real pain is and is living through tragedy, so it's far more believable. Paul found joy in whatever he went through because he knew it was all for God. He didn't find it in external things or experiences. It was an internal experience. 
he rejoiced in the Lord and he considered it a privilege to suffer for Christ. And he goes on to say that what's happened to him, meaning his imprisonment, has helped his ministry by spreading the gospel to more people. And he didn't just mean other prisoners, but, but Roman guards and government officials as well. And he explains that because he is in chains, it's caused other believers to have courage in Jesus and to preach God's word. That's the nerves. <laughs> Acts chapter 16 tells a story about another time that Paul and Silas, a companion of Paul's, had been severely beaten and thrown in prison. They were bound and chained. They were undaunted, they were unafraid, and they were praying and singing songs, songs of praise to God, while the other prisoners listened on and they were ministered to. And suddenly there was an earthquake. All the prison doors flew open and all their chains were loosened. The guard woke up and saw all the doors opened and he just assumed that all the prisoners had escaped. And he was about to end his life when Paul shouted, don't harm yourself, we're all still here. And because Paul's kindness, because of Paul's kindness, the prison guard was open to what Paul was saying. And he and his family were saved that night. Paul was willing to give up his freedom that night to preach to the guard. Paul shows gentleness while going through trouble. And as it says in verse 5, let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. He made the, the choice to be kind and show gentleness, even when he was struggling himself. And God wants us to strive to do that too, to show others what it means to find strength in him, even when, when we're going through difficult times, and perhaps even lead others to him through our kindness. Paul totally trusted God with his life or his death. Philippians 1.21 says, For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. He knew that as long as he lived, he would keep spreading God's word, to live is Christ. But if he died, or when he died, it would mean being with Christ, to die is gain. And that's where he found his joy, knowing he would be with Jesus one day. But it wasn't time for Paul to be with Jesus yet. God wanted him alive. God had work for Paul to do. And while we're here in this life, even though we, our joy can be found in our future with Jesus, it's not all about that. Otherwise, we'd move on to it as soon as we were saved. God wanted Paul here for a reason, and he wants us here for a reason too. And I don't know what his plan is for you. I, I really don't even know what that means for me. But I do know that it's to serve him in some way. And if it involves suffering, and God said that it would, he wants us to live through it in peace. Paul says in verse 6, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Remember, it was Paul who was in prison that said this. And he's saying that when we're anxious, we should go to God first. Reading the Bible, going to church and talking to our friends about our problems, it doesn't substitute for prayer. We need that personal time with God. And I know that I need to make more time to pray. We won't find true peace that Paul talks about in earthly things. We've all tried that, and it really doesn't relieve our anxiety. God's power surpasses all things. And as his children, he wants us to ask for his help and truly believe that we can trust him to do what is right. And whether that means changing the situation or changing us, it will be what is right. And Paul says, by prayer and supplication. I looked up supplication and it means to plead humbly, 
There is always a request in supplication. He says, let your requests be made known to God with thanksgiving. At times when we're anxious or hurting, we just can't find anything to be thankful for. But we do all have something to be thankful for. Jesus did die for us. And if you can't think of anything else when you're suffering or in pain, just remember that. Paul really knew Jesus and he felt his presence. And for us to feel his presence, we need to get to know him too, to understand the way he thinks, to get to know his personality. And if you think about the way we got to know our friends, you know, how, how do we really get to know them, their personalities? It was by spending time with them, having a coffee and a chat, doing something with them, being in each other's presence. And God has given us the tools to get to know him too. We can find out all about him in the Bible and we can chat to him through prayer and just spend time thinking on him. But we'll never get to know someone's personality the first time we meet them. It takes time, so take time and really get to know him. It wasn't that long ago that I had doubts about all this time I'm spending, with, spending on God. I've been wondering whether, am I getting in too deep with this? And I'm pretty sure my family are wondering the same thing. Um, as I said, I'm doing the Breaking Free course at the moment. That's taking up a lot of my spare time. I often listen to an old message or worship music. And I see people around me living seemingly a normal life. Not a bad life, but a life without Christ. While I'm trying to get my breaking free homework done around work and housework. You know, not that I don't enjoy it, I really do. But sometimes I feel like I'm missing out. But the presenter of Breaking Free said something on that very first night that I really needed to hear. Beth Moore said, don't be scared about what you'll miss out on. Be scared to miss what God has for you. He has so much more for us than any worldly thing that we'll miss out on. Let him reveal himself to you. It will be the start of a greater feeling of his presence. I know it was for me. Philippians 7 is the last one I read earlier from chapter 4. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. God made a promise to give us peace. A peace that is beyond our understanding when we lay our problems before him through prayer and fully, fully trust him to get us through our situation. We must fully rely on God to achieve this peace. The story about Jesus calming the storm is one that we, most of us probably know, um, but it shows us the peace that God wants us to have. The story goes like this. Jesus had been teaching all day, and when night came, he said to his disciples, let's cross over to the other side of the lake. And while they were making their way across the other side, a windstorm came up and waves were beating into the boat and it was taking on water. And while the storm was raging, Jesus, he was asleep back in, in the back of the boat on a pillow. He wasn't worried, but his disciples were frantic. And they woke him up and said to him, do you not care that we are perishing? They said, do you not care that we are perishing? They didn't say it twice, but I'm just saying that for effect. <laughs> and then Jesus got up restrained the wind and said to the sea, peace, be still, and then there was calm. Of course Jesus cared for his disciples, and they would have known that, but during the storm they just couldn't see it. It doesn't matter what storm is raging in our lives, Jesus is in the boat with us, he can calm the waters, and if he's not worried, well we shouldn't be either. I just want to finish with this get an early mark today. 
1 Peter 5.10 says, But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen and settle you. We will suffer in this life, but the suffering will end for those who believe in Christ and God will personally restore us and make us strong. We're just passing through this life and even if the unthinkable happens, we have God and a hope that is secure with Jesus in heaven. Let's pray. Lord, I pray for everyone here today. Please help us find comfort in knowing our future is safe with you, but also knowing that you are here for us now, whatever we're going through. Please grow our faith and grow our trust in you. You, Lord, are the only one who can give us true peace. We want our eyes on eternity, but the peace you offer us now. In Jesus' name, amen. What are you doing next Sunday, sir? <laughs> Fantastic. We might get the worship guys up. We might finish with a, 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 a song, a bit of worship. Hey, um, can, I, can I encourage you? Um, who, who's struggling? Who feels like they needed to hear something like that today? Who feels like they need peace? They need some peace in their world. Hey, what, here's what we're going to do. We're going to finish with a song. If, uh, if, you, if you need to go, you're free to go. We've got tea and coffee next door so you go through that door there the urns are on there's tea and coffee we're, we're going to finish with a with a song if you'd like some prayer this morning you've got two options here hey you can come out the front and we can get some of the leaders here to pray for you but god moves through you and the guy sitting to the left and the right of you as well and uh, so maybe you might like to just turn to somebody else near you and just go hey here's what i believe god's saying to me this morning would you would you pray for me i think there's something really powerful about sharing with somebody else this is what i believe god's saying or this is the area i feel like the holy spirit's tapping on and would you pray for me and we can minister to one another in doing that so feel free this morning if you want to pray for somebody sitting here if they're okay with it go for that we'll be up the front we're happy to pray with you but um please feel free to minister to one another as well as we have some worship here and if there's anybody here this morning and you have not begun that journey of walking with Jesus or maybe at one point you did but life got in the way and you got caught up in a bunch of other things and maybe you went and checked it all out and you realized that this this peace that Sue's talking about you thought you would find it out there um, I love what Jesus said about peace he said peace I leave you peace I give you but not like the world um, you know when you when you when you've got that hot guy or that hot girl and you've suddenly got peace and you feel like life's all great and then that hot girl or that hot guy either disappear out of your life or one day they become nearly 50 and you wake up and look at them and they're not as hot as they used to be and if your peace is attached to them that way and that peace disappears or some people peace comes if I can just have a bank balance that I don't have to worry about money but there are gravestones all around the world that are testimony to people who had more money than they could ever spend but it didn't give them what they were looking for there was something more that they needed maybe it's a, a job we're thinking if we get there and you got there and you realize at the end of the day it's a great job but it didn't give me what i wanted i still have that hollow empty feeling on the inside of me well jesus said the peace i give you is not stapled to a circumstance or a situation circumstances can change situations can change the peace i give you is is the fact that you're reconnected with the creator of the universe and no matter what the situation is when you die when you leave this earthly body you're going to go and you're going to be with me for eternity in a place that the writers of those ancient documents described as a place where there's no more sorrow and no more tears no more pain and no more heartache but the journey begins here it begins by opening up our hearts and inviting god into our world jesus christ 2000 years ago hung on a cross not for anything he did but because of what you and i have done you can't have a law without a punishment then it just simply becomes good advice and god didn't create the world started spinning and say here's some good advice but do whatever you want he has some boundaries he has some rules i guess call them requirements i like to call them logical and loving limitations to life this is his way of saying if you live within these boundaries you are going to squeeze the most out of this human existence 
than you ever can. But the world says, jump outside the boundaries and you'll get more. But we get outside there and we realise it's not more, it's worse. And so today, if that's you, I just want to encourage you. Why don't you come back to God? Maybe you began the journey, maybe you turned away. Why don't you come back to Jesus? You don't have to beg, you don't have to crawl. It says we can come boldly to the throne of grace. Open your heart, repent. God, I'm sorry that I went my own way. It doesn't work, Father. I want to come back to you, Lord. And he made a promise. He said he'll send his Holy Spirit to come and to fill you and to empower you to live the life that he's called you to live. Maybe you're here today and you've never done that. You're not coming back. You've just never done it. Well, can I encourage you this morning? Would you think about the claims of Jesus Christ? Would you think about what he had to say? Would you think about why is this this, this Jewish carpenter who died 2,000 years ago still so pivotal in human history? What is it about that man? Why is it that this movement is worldwide right now based on a few eyewitness accounts from a few guys who were so convinced that that event happened 2,000 years ago that they physically gave their life to keep the story going? There's got to be something in that would you at least consider the claims of Jesus? Talk to somebody else here. Get a Bible and read. If you don't have one, come and see me. I'll get you one. But explore the reality of God through Jesus. Would you do that for me this morning? Amen. Let's, let's stand to our feet. Let's worship.